This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Naimbag garabi, masanto siya sa labi sa iyo amin. Marahin na banggi sa Indogabos. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Maayong, maayong gabi sa Tibok Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, up to Saba. Ako po si Eric Espina. Ito ang inyong nag-iisang republika. Uh, sa gabing ito po ay medyo babaguhin natin ang uh, pag-uusapan natin at tututukan naman natin. Uh, aaminin ko na dahil ako po isang Cebuano. Ang isa pong lalawigan na malapit po sa aking puso, ito po ay ang Cebu. Dahil uh, isa pong masasabi nating misteryo itong lalawigan na ito. Hindi man malawakan ang lupain nito. Subalit, ang kagalakan, ang kahandaan ng mga Cebuano na magtrabaho at maghanap ng diskarte, ang siyang nagbibigay ng uh, masasabi nating progresibong lalawigan. Kaya dapat lalo nating kilalanin ang probinsyang ito at masasabi natin ang magiging muka uh, ngayon at siguro sa kinabukasan. Kaya masaya po tayo sa ating uh, panauin sa gabing ito. Pero bago natin ipakilala po yan, ang isa po sa magiging kasama natin who will join us in uh, interviewing our guest is a columnist, uh, uh, Tukayo, Eric San Juan, who writes for Opinion uh, Newspaper. Yan. Yan na ano niya ngayon, Newspaper. Kaya you better get a copy of that. <laughs> And uh, tulad ng nabagit ko kanina, tignan niyo naman ang mga headline sa Cebu. Oh, oh merong third bridge na. Ah, ang ganda ng design ng bridge mm -hmm. ng Cebu. Oh, huwag niyo lang isama yung Dunay rin na bumagsak. Ano? Okay. And then, uh, another, another number one for Cebu. Oh, sa isa na namang newspaper ito, nag-ano ang Cebu sa Zumba. Oh, Cebu achieves uh, Zumba record. Okay. So, there are many things happening in Cebu. For example, may mga bagong uh, mangyayari. Uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng isang uh, international airport dyan. So, there's so much frenzied activity happening in Cebu. And we'd like to get a flavor, a taste of who the Cebuano is, what the Cebuano is. And we can only get that, a smidgen of that, from its uh, leaders. We're fortunate to have the daughter of a former governor of Cebu, and uh, she's also the daughter of the former deputy speaker in Congress, and uh, well, she followed the same uh, track of her father. She became governor of Cebu, uh, finished the entire term, and is now representative of the third district of Cebu. We have Congresswoman Gwendolyn Garcia. Good evening. Maying gabi, Eric. Maying gabi, Eric. Good evening. Ayan. So, tamang-tama po ang topic po natin, Cebu and Gwen Garcia, because, my goodness, nine years po kayong naglingkod, ano? You were incumbent for nine years. Well, totoo po yun. I was able, I was fortunate and blessed enough to serve the Cebuanos for three terms. Aha. And, how would I say, hindi ho kayo napagod, because I've heard you were always going out of the capital, You were three, four, three or four towns every day. Well, we had a uh, new definition of work. Okay. If you'd heard of 24-7, okay. that's 24 hours a day, yeah. seven days a week. Yes. So, under my administration, I asked everyone to work, well, myself at least, 25-8. Yes. So okay. that if I could have an extra hour of the day and an extra day of the week, 
sometimes in jest I would say, baka pwede naman magpasa tayo ng provincial board uh, ordinance na oh, oh. add another hour kasi parang time was never enough. There was so much to do. Uh -huh. And nine years was definitely not enough, no? I don't think uh, it would ever be enough kasi uh, the first term <coughs> we laid down the groundwork for the several programs that we had implemented which uh -huh. spanned the whole gamut from agriculture to social services, mm -hmm. peace and order, tourism, mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. international affairs, all of these. And then on the second term we saw the programs taken, taking off. Okay. And on the third term we were able to enhance, okay. to put in uh, even better mechanisms in order for these programs to really, really work for the Cebuanos. Uh -huh. Politics, That's, it, would it be right <coughs> to say it was in your DNA already or uh, it just, it just uh, came along? I think uh, you, you, as you yourself <laughs> would <laughs> attest, uh, Eric, uh -huh. uh, having been born yeah. <laughs> to a, uh, yes, yes. a great uh, Cebuano you, political leader himself, uh -huh. the former governor, you, former senator, yeah, yeah. Uh, department uh, secretary, uh -huh. uh, Rene Espina. Uh -huh. Um, you grew up, as I did, uh -huh. witnessing how our fathers worked uh -huh. and how dedicated they were uh -huh. to the job. Uh -huh. And as part of the family, we also grew up with the inconvenience of yes. being uh, in the political milieu where, uh -huh. you know, people would be in and out of the house mm. all hours of the day. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then you'd wake no up privacy. in the morning uh -huh. and expect yeah. to eat your breakfast. Iba na kumakain sa breakfast mo. That's true, that's true. <laughs> and so I really grew up with a certain uh, dislike. Uh -huh. for a political uh, kind of life uh -huh. and I thought uh, to myself that uh, I would not want this on my own family uh -huh. and I would uh, shun politics as uh -huh. much as I could but then I guess uh, no matter how I dislike politics, politics liked me too much uh -huh. and caught up with me. Uh -huh. The moment provided itself, there was a vacuum. I think the events uh -huh. that fell into place, uh -huh. uh, really our uh, life is in the hands of the omnipotent <laughs> and all-wise uh -huh. God. We may have our own plans, uh -huh. but uh, in the end, His will uh, is done because events happened to me, Yes. which eventually, well, um, I was in uh, UP Diliman. Yes. After I graduated, uh, I went, uh, I got married okay. uh, too early. Uh -huh. I went to a, I, I was in another island, okay. but after 20 years, I decided to go back to UP. I mm -hmm. wanted to uh, become a lawyer. Okay. I made it to law school. Uh -huh. And then my father won his third and last term as governor. Yes. And <coughs> at that time, I had to choose. He needed someone to help him uh -huh. as his consultant. And I had to choose between pursuing uh, you know, a, uh, my law mm -hmm. um, course mm -hmm. or to go back and help him. And of course, I had to choose uh, as a daughter. Uh -huh. uh, I had to set aside my own personal ambition. Well, you I were a good daughter, in short. <laughs> <laughs> if I, you, will, you will not say that, I will say it for you. You, 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 you decided well. Um, you know, one uh, classmate of mine in law school yes. uh, said it very well. Uh -huh. Because he saw, she saw my bothered you know, look yeah, when yeah. I was there. It was enrollment time. Uh -huh. I was really battling between should I continue for my second year or should I go back. And she said, what's troubling you? And I, I told her my problem. Uh -huh. And she said, so is that a problem? I said, but how can I leave UP? How yes. can I, I love Malcolm Hall. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I love UP. Mm -hmm. oh. And she looks at me straight in the eye and she says, you love UP more than your dad? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that settled it. Yeah. I just said, I should never even have asked that question. So I uh -huh. went back. I served as his consultant for three years. Mm -hmm. And then that was the time when the love for the province grew. Because um, very often my, my father would send me to the far off barangays, to the far off towns, even to uh, islets, uh -huh. uh, you know, to attend to a certain <coughs> event, a ceremony, or what. And I met the people. Uh -huh. And I saw that uh, I could um, do something for this province. Uh -huh. And that's when I uh, decided to do what uh, many considered. Uh, quite a foolhardy and a crazy uh, thing and that was to run for governor even though I never ever um, served in any capacity in any other government position before. I'd never even won, I'd mm -hmm. much less run in any uh, election in the past. 
But uh, I did that. I ran for the highest position of the province. And I said to myself, Lord, I think the events of my life have led me to this. If you really want me to become governor, you are not going to come down from heaven to yes. sign a certificate of candidacy for yeah. me. So I'll have to do I'll that. Have to do it, yes. And then I'll campaign as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I read you wrong, Lord, uh -huh. then it's okay. I can go back to what I really, really wanted to do, and that was to finish law my law yeah. school. And um, But then if I won, then I promise you that I will not spare any minute of my life. I will spend it all for Cebu and the Cebuans. And that's what I did. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I have a question wow. for you. Uh, that's sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> See, that means the Lord is with us also and agrees with you. <laughs> Congresswoman, I have a question for you. How important is it as a provincial executive to go out of his or her office go to the towns, meet the people eyeball to eyeball, shake their hands, sit down with them, listen to their stories, which other executives maybe do not do. Mm. How important is, how vital is that to public office? You were talking about other executives, you know, it all boils down to having the heart for it. Yes. Mm. It's not just Correct. about competence Correct. or experience mm. or being ready for the position or even uh, loving the status yes. and the glory of it all. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's really having the heart to serve. Yeah. Because I've always considered my winning yes. in the three elections even, even after I'd already done something in the first term. But for those three elections as governor, I'd always considered it truly a great blessing. Uh -huh. mm. And it is very, very important that you are actually in touch with your people. I mean, they can actually touch yes. you and hold you and uh -huh. see you and listen to you and embrace you. Uh -huh. I would tell the Cebuanos, uh, if I reach these barangays that, um, you know, are seldom visited, uh -huh. and I would go there and say, you can come and see me, uh -huh. you can hold me, you can touch me, you can kiss me, uh -huh. but yeah. just the women, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and how about the old men? Uh, but the lolo, the lolos, the lolos. I would stroke their heads. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but I, 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 I tell, it is important, Eric, yeah, yeah. because you can't just re rely on reports. So touch okay. You can't just rely on numbers and figures like or pictures uh, shown uh, to you. Ibang iba talaga pag nakita mo yung tao. Personally. Uh, yeah, I, I always like to tell this story if we have time. Yeah, yeah please, please. Mm -hmm. Um, one time I was in a, in a small town in the south and uh -huh. there were several people because, you know, they were excited, they were going to see the governor. And there were these two old people that were seated, <coughs> they could hardly uh -huh. stand up or walk, but they were old. One was a woman, I approached her first, I held her hand and I said, how old are you? And she said, I'm, I'm 89. Uh -huh. I said, wow, um, you know, let's praise the Lord that you uh -huh. are still active. And she said, but my elder brother is even older. Uh -huh. So I said, I said, how old is he? He said, he's about 95. Uh -huh. So I went to him and I held his hand and I said, Manoy. Oh, he called him Manoy. Manoy, yeah. Manoy. Mm -hmm. Unsay imong pangan? Oh. Anong pangalan mo? Oh. And he says his name. Oh. And ilang taong ka na? Ah, 95. Ganon. Tapos tingin siya sa akin, sabi niya, eh ikaw. Oh. Anong pangalan mo? Sino ka? <laughs> 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 eh yung mayor na kasama ko, sabi niya, oh. Hoy, hindi mo yan kilala? Oh. Ang gobernador yan, si uh, Governor Gwen. Uh, uh, tumingin siya sa mayor. Tapos tumingin sa akin. Uh, tumingin uli sa mayor. Tapos biglang humagulhol. Uh, I mean, really, cried. was crying. Uh, you know, uh, was uh, sobbing. Sobbing. And I, I said, what did I do? Uh, and then he whispered something to the mayor. And the uh, mayor, after hearing him, I was looking at his face uh, and tears started uh, to glisten in his eyes. Uh, and his, I said, oh God, <laughs> you know, what did I do? Yes. <laughs> and the mayor turns to me and he said, you know, he said he had never, ever, ever. dreamt or mm. expected meeting you. old as he is that he would ever, ever see a governor, much less hold mm -hmm. her hand. Mm -hmm. Nung narinig ko yun, yun. I was the one who started to cry. Oh, now. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's what you call an...